Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines. This is I Am Loved Church. Hello, well, I have another message. I know this is the second one today. I might post it another day or whenever, but it's very important. So listen very closely. The entire meaning of life is about love. If you're asking yourself this question, why was I created? I would say you were created to love. But love isn't just having the good side of things. It's also about the bad side, the ugly side, the side that we don't show people. Someone told me this, that God has a relationship with the trillions of atoms that are in your hair follicle and he knows each of them by name. He has an intimate relationship with him. He cares if even a sparrow falls to the ground, a bird. How much will he care for you? When God spoke into creation, he said, let there be light. He is the embodiment of a relationship when we think of the Trinity, three in one. Let there be more relationship. He gave us a choice to enter into that relationship with him forever or to worship things, which is idols, meaning they have no life in them. Money has no life in it. Materialistic and possessions have no life in them. So with that being said, I was talking to my wife earlier, and that's what we were talking about. God loves you, and he wants a relationship with you. But do you want a relationship with him? That's your choice. I had so much planned out. I said so much in there, man. I preached a really good sermon to my wife. <laughs> well, it was, I hope it was more of a conversation. She didn't get mad, so it was great, and we were relating on things. But what is the church if we're not relational? I think it was Paul who speaks in one of the Corinthian books. He basically says, if I have all wisdom, if I have all knowledge, if I can, you know, I have all faith. I can move mountains. I was the strongest person in the world. I had all the money I ever wanted. But I had not love. I have nothing. We are created for relationship. Relationship with God and relationship with people. When they fell from the garden, they fell into works. They fell into earning love. But when Jesus came, he, he basically said, you can never earn it. Matter of fact, I don't want you to earn it. I want you. God and his majesty, he had everything he ever wanted. I mean, he, he can create particles from nothing, pulling things into existence and pushing things out by his word. And he created us dirty and filthy with all our mistakes and trash. And he's full of love and compassion. And he calls us. He says, I want you. He said, if I had all the things in heaven sitting at my right hand, but I didn't have you, I'd be worthless. The reason why God created all of this was because of relationship. He wants a relationship. And I believe you want a relationship too. Not just with Jesus, 
God, which is the primary source of our life, but with people around. Pharisees are basically people who don't care about people. They treat people like they're an object. They don't care about their emotions. They don't care about their personal life. So it's very easy for people to judge. People like that to be judgmental. Put this side, put this person in this box, put this person in this box, and these groups of people, y'all jumping over here. <clears throat> and I'll stand up at my pedestal because I'm perfect. <laughs> Jesus wanted relationship. God wanted relationship so badly. He abandoned heaven to be a homeless man on earth to spend time with you. And he did that in the Old Testament when he first arrived. These Pharisees, they had not known that. They were cut off from God. When the, when the fall happened, they were completely cut off from relationship. So it all became about a list of things to do. And some of you guys' faith is just a list of things to do. And people become that part of that list. Oh, this, this, and this, and this. Okay, this, and this, and this. And at the end of that list, you stand up on your pedestal and you go, look, I'm, I'm great, ain't I? And all those people look at you and they go, oh, sure. But you're going to be very alone. If you constantly look at this world like a list, like an agenda, you don't let people in. You only let God see certain pieces of you. You can see this part, God. You can't see that part. I don't want you to have a part of my relationship and my marriage. I don't want to talk to you about that. I don't want to talk to you about my work, you know, but anything else, God, you can talk to about. And if we treat God this way, then we're definitely going to treat one another this way. Remember, Jesus, God, has a relationship with the trillions of atoms and he knows them by name. Don't you think he wants, he cares about what happens at work and he wants you to talk to him about that in prayer? or your marriage, or yourself, or your kids, or your brothers and your sisters who do or don't know Christ, or your church. If we don't show God every part of us, then how could we bring that relationship from the beginning? Because Jesus came to restore what was lost, the Old Testament, was basically a set of rules until Jesus arrived to restore us back into a relationship. We live in the Old Testament world. We do. I mean, look at the way people treat each other, whether you're in customer service, especially like McDonald's, they just get their stuff and go. They don't care about how they talk to you. They don't care about how you feel. They don't care about what's going on in your personal life. That's the way of the world. That's the way of Satan. I mean, for crying out loud, we have <clears throat> prostitutes. You just pay money, you get your sex on, and you leave. And we treat each other this way. But Jesus came to restore what was lost. People aren't just, you just read about them in a book and you accumulate them and who you think they are and that's what box they fit in. They're more than that. God sees them as more than that. You and I are more than that. But we can't understand that if we don't open up to one another and show each other the dark, the nasty, the ugly, the weird. And quite frankly, we will never open up to that until we show God first. 
because God will love you through all those things. And when you receive that love, you can in turn bring what is in heaven to earth, to a world where there's no relationship. There's just agenda and a list of why I'm better than you. You can bring heaven to earth. Heaven isn't the things in heaven. Heaven is bringing God's love. He suffered with us and he still loved us. He forgave us even when we didn't and still don't deserve it. It's like, take all your junk, take every person that you don't like about people. And the person who tells you they love you the most, which is God, take all that and put that on Jesus and see Jesus through that lens. You hate Jesus, you hate God. But even though you hate him, he still comes after you and loves you and forgives you constantly. And we can never learn to love each other unless we know that love, his love. The world isn't dying for more entertainment. It's not dying for more knowledge. It's not dying for more possessions or money. You know, maybe it's dying for relationship. We were created to have a relationship with God and one another. And if we can't have that, but we have all the possessions in the world, we have nothing. So it's in addition to what I preached this morning. Love God, love people. The more you love God, the more you should love people. And if you don't love people more and more, then you don't know God because God is love.